In 2012, 21-year-old Mario Balotelli first helped Manchester City win their first English championship in 40 years. And a few weeks later, he led the Italian national team to the final of the European Championship, gaining global recognition and the nickname Super Mario. However, the career of a footballer who was predicted to have great success from the very beginning and who would later snatch the golden ball from the hands of Messi and Ronaldo took a completely different direction and today, we can confidently call him one of the greatest disappointments in the history of football. Why did this happen? Today, we will look at a story that is not a classic example of collapse. It's rather a downward spiral, but still a sin wave, in which spectacular falls were mixed with returns, maybe not to the top, but to high form, each time giving a bit of hope that such a career would take a different course. Balotelli owes his surname to an Italian family to which he was placed at the age of three, after his biological parents could not afford treatment for the diseases he suffered from as a child. It can be said that, at the age of three, he received his first chance because Silvia and Francesco Balotelli undoubtedly changed his life and gave him the right start. Football quickly became his greatest passion, which was not particularly difficult for young boys growing up at the turn of the century in the glory of Calcio. He took his first steps in the local AC Limousin in the Brescia region, where in 2006 he made his debut in Serie C at the third level of the competition when he was only 15 years old. Before he could get into the senior team for good, he was already a player of Inter Milan, whose scouts carefully monitored the entire Lombardy region and captured a talented teenager. He dispelled any doubts about the scale of his talent with his first match for the Nerazzurri, which was a friendly match against England's Sheffield United, in which he scored his first two goals. He made his league debut just a month later, appearing on the pitch of the Stadio Sant'Elia in Cagliari, a symbolic debut because Roberto Mancini sent him to the pitch in added time, but just three days after his premier performance in the capital of Sardinia, he played him from the first minute against Regina in the Coppa Italia, in which he scored two goals again. While this match did not yet arouse widespread interest in Italy, in the next cup round, in the quarterfinals against Juventus, Mario made headlines in all Italian newspapers. After the first match at Stadio Giuseppe Meazza ended in a draw 2-2, the 17-year-old scored two goals again, this time in a high-stakes match, ensuring the Nerazzurri won 3-2 and advanced to the semifinals. Balotelli impressed not only with his great composure in front of his opponent's goal, but also with his great self-confidence. The best example of which was the fact that he was the first to take penalties and free kicks straight into the locker room formed by Ibrahimovic, Luis Figo, and Adriano. During these few weeks, Balo sent a clear signal to Mancini that such a great talent was not worth keeping on the bench. And until the end of the season, he regularly received further chances, adding three league goals to his first, and for the club, the third of the five championship titles that the team from Milan won between 2006 and 2010. Unfortunately for him, despite winning the championship, there was a shock in Inter's offices. Roberto Mancini resigned and was replaced as coach by Portuguese Jose Mourinho. Before the next season began under the leadership of the new coach, Mario had already won another trophy. In the Supercoppa Italiana, with the score 1-1, one -one, he appeared on the pitch in the 67th minute, replacing Luis Figo, and was on the score sheet just 15 minutes later. In the fall, three months after his 18th birthday, he became the youngest goal scorer for Inter in the history of the Champions League. In addition, two goals against Roma and a goal against Juventus, which, combined with the previously mentioned self-confidence, could suggest that we are dealing with a player with an exceptionally cool head and an iron psyche. All the more so because already during his first season at Inter, he had to deal with the festival of racist insults from Italian fans that began around him. Even though Mario was born in Palermo in Sicily, raised in Brescia in the north of the country, and always felt like an Italian in flesh and blood, he did not look like a typical resident of Italy. Until the age of 18, he still had the status of an immigrant from Ghana for formal reasons, but after receiving an Italian passport, he quickly found himself in the notebooks of Azzurri youth national team coaches. This fact aroused outrage among some of the most radical fan groups throughout Italy, who openly opposed the appointment of black players to the national team. 
the hatred of fans of other clubs grew, and Jew fans even insulted him in matches against teams other than Inter. It was then that the first cracks began to appear in his image. A moment ago, I mentioned that the first months of his adventure with adult football could indicate that we are dealing with a player with an iron mind. Let us remember, however, that at the end of the second season at Inter, Mario was still only 18 years old, arousing not only nationwide, but even global interest. And at the same time, he became a victim of racism, which was a huge problem in all Italian stadiums in those years, and which the authorities dealt with the leagues were completely failing. It could have been too much for a lost 18-year-old raised in a foster family, who suddenly gained enormous fame and money almost overnight. Overwhelmed by a wave of hatred and rejection, and unable to cope with the situation, he not only allowed himself to be provoked, but also began to play a provocative game against everyone around him, turning his great self-confidence into arrogance. In the next season, during the autumn matches, Jose Mourinho removed him from the team for the first time due to his inappropriate approach to training. I cannot accept that such a young player trains less than Figo, Cordoba, or Zanetti. Despite good results achieved on all three fronts, the tension between the Portuguese coach and his young, insubordinate player continued to grow. Mourinho, known for his strong character and ability to subjugate the locker room with greater characters than Mario, failed completely in the case of the Italian. He was in no way able to reason with him, half-jokingly and half-seriously saying that with Balotelli he would sooner end up at a psychiatrist. Mario, Mario was 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 good fun. I could I could write I could write a book of 200 pages of uh, my two years in interview with, with Mario, but the book would be not a drama. The book would be a comedy. A comedy. I remember one in uh, in Kazan. We went to Kazan in the Champions League, and um, in that match, I had um, all my strikers uh, uh, injured. No Milito, uh, no Eto. I was really in trouble, and Mario was the only one. Mario gets uh, a yellow card in the in minute 42, 43. So when I go to the dressing room at halftime, I I spend, I would say, 14 minutes. Of the 15, I was spending 14 minutes speaking only for Mario. Mario, I cannot change you. I cannot make a change. I don't have a striker on the bench. Don't touch anybody. Play only with the ball. When we lose the ball, no reaction. If somebody provocates you, no reaction. If the referee makes a mistake, no reaction. Mario, please. Minute 46. No way. Red card. No way. <laughs> <laughs> By the time Inter lifted their fifth Scudetto in a row, Ballo already had enemies among almost everyone at the club. More and more often, his teammates also spoke negatively about him, as they had been trying to stick to his side, but their patience was running out, and it was not surprising since Mario was able to appear in one of the TV programs wearing the shirt of Inter's biggest rival, AC Milan. Revealing with disarming honesty, that he had actually been supporting this team from Milan since he was a child. However, Mourinho still saw him as a player worth giving another chance. Balotelli would not be himself if he did not commit further antics in such a situation. The 20th of April, 2010 Inter played the first semi-final match of the Champions League against Barcelona at Stadio Giuseppe Miazza. They were three games away from the trophy the Nerazzurri have been waiting for for 45 years. After an hour of play, the score was 3-1 to one for the hosts, and it seemed like a dream situation before the rematch and a great celebration in Milan. Meanwhile, in the 75th minute, Balotelli replaces the injured Diego Milito, the scorer of the third goal. However, he does not look like a player who would bite the bullet and show that he is capable of playing in the first team. He responds to a portion of whistles from the fans with eloquent gestures and a clear lack of any effort, almost walking around the pitch for a quarter of an hour. After the referee's final whistle, he tears off his black and blue t-shirt and throws it on the ground, still engaging in arguments with Inter fans. Still in the tunnel leading to the locker, Marco Materazzi couldn't stand it anymore and hit his teammate. After the match, apart from the fans waiting in front of the stadium gates, who wanted to bring him justice, 
Materazzi was followed by criticism from the entire team and Marino himself. Balotelli did not play again, neither in the return match at Camp Nou nor in the final victory against Bayern Munich. Despite winning the treble, it was already clear that the first transfer from Inter that summer would be to say goodbye to Balotelli. In England, he wanted to distance himself from these negative emotions, which was made easier by the presence of Roberto Mancini on the city bench, with whom he made his debut in Serie A three years earlier, and who treated him like an adoptive son throughout his career. He had a strong entry into England because in his debut, he scored the winning goal in the Europa League against Romanian FC Timisoara. Unfortunately, in the same match, he also suffered a serious knee injury requiring surgery, which excluded him from the game for the next two months. He quickly reminded of his other non-sporting nature when he crashed an Audi R8 worth over 100,000 pound in the first in a series of his driving offenses. Suffice it to say that within a few months, his parking fines exceeded 10,000 pound and the Maserati he replaced after crashing his previous car was towed to a police parking lot more than 20 times. Fortunately, he still had weeks where he reminded us that we were still dealing with a footballer. In December, he received the important Golden Boy Award for the best European under-21 player. In the spring, in the FA Cup final against Stoke, he was chosen man of the match, winning City's first trophy in 34 years. It is worth mentioning that at that time, the citizens did not resemble the club we know today. That season was their third since it was taken over by Sheikh Mansour, and yet until his arrival, the club was not only struggling with financial problems, but in terms of sports, it was a complete average Premier League player, which only six seasons earlier had been circulating between the first and second English leagues without having absolutely no comparison to their derby rival from Old Trafford. So, despite the Arab petrodollars pumped in for several years, the FA Cup won in 2011 was celebrated in the blue part of Manchester as a great success. And Balotelli was seen as a player who still has a chance to become the future of this club and a symbol of its great rebirth. And as is the case with Balotelli, just when it seemed that his career was on the right track again, he found another corner where it derailed spectacularly. What else can you call throwing darts at juniors from the clubhouse or playing Angry Birds on an iPad while sitting on the bench during the match between Italy and the Faroe Islands? During the summer camp in the USA, in a friendly match with Los Angeles Galaxy, he outdid himself and transferred the behavior he had previously shown off the pitch to the pitch. When going one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, any normal footballer would have turned these situations into a goal with a sure shot past the goalkeeper. But Mario is not normal, which he clearly proved in that situation. The furious Mancini immediately looked towards the substitute's bench, and a few seconds later the 22-year-old was no longer on the pitch. This friendly match against the Galaxy team was a perfect metaphor for Balotelli's career. First, he scored the penalty, giving his team the lead, and a moment later, he overshadowed all his achievements with thoughtless, irresponsible, even puppyish behavior. After this mishap, he lost his place in the squad and watched the first few rounds of the new season from the bench. However, just like in Milan, Mancini also tried to turn a blind eye to some of his compatriots' antics in Manchester, and in the following season, he finally repaid him in the best possible way, becoming one of the key figures in the historic championship for the citizens scoring 17 goals in 32 matches, having already had the extremely effective Kun Aguero as a partner, who strengthened the competition in attack that summer. Between the end of September and mid-December, Mario scored 10 goals, often coming off the bench only in the second half, scoring an average goal every 68 minutes. He finished the championship season as the team's third best scorer behind Aguero and Eden Zeko, but had a better goals to time spent on the pitch ratio than them. But again, like boredom, after a better period, he would lose his shape, give up on training, and his mind would be occupied with completely different matters. In the spring, even Mancini couldn't stand it, which was a clear signal that things were really bad for the young Italian. I have no words for him. He is not a bad boy, and he is a fantastic footballer. But at the moment, I am sad because he is wasting his talent and his quality. I just hope that one day he will understand how he is ruining his future and will change his behavior, but I don't have the strength for it anymore. After receiving the medal for the English Championship, 
even despite the hopeless end of the season. Mario was one of the brightest stars of the Italian national team at Euro 2012. During the tournament held in Poland and Ukraine, the Italians reached the final, eliminating along the way the English on penalties and the then European runner-up, the Germans, against whom Balotelli played the best international match of his career and with two goals knocked them out of the final against Spain. The final was soundly lost by the Italians, but Euro 2012 seemed to be the perfect turning point for his career, showing how good a player he could become in the future. No one would have thought then that at the age of 22, the footballer would already have achieved his greatest sporting successes. In the fall, during his third season in England, he scored only three goals, taking into account all competitions. That was the end of him at the Etihad. Offended at everyone and at odds with everyone, he eventually filed a lawsuit against the club for what he believed was an unfair suspension at the end of the previous season. In the winter, a resigned Mancini said goodbye to him without any regrets when he decided to return to Serie A by signing a contract with Milan, the biggest rival of the club in which he entered the wide waters. Inter fans may have been furious, but their rivals, surprisingly, knowing the past of their new striker, were happy for his arrival. Just like the Manchester authorities, who got rid of the problem, and the footballer himself, who finally joined, as he claimed, the club he had supported since childhood. In fact, it seemed as if all the pieces of the puzzle had finally come together perfectly. Balotelli made a spectacular start at the San Siro, scoring 12 goals in 13 matches, including the first two in his debut in front of his home audience during the victory against Udinese. His fantastic form that spring allowed Milan, after a disastrous first round, to start climbing the table and ultimately finish the season in third place, qualifying for the Champions League. Balotelli was the face of the promotion. However, after the Rossoneri's expectations were raised to the limit, they were disappointed. Even not necessarily Super Mario himself, because in his second season in the red and black colors, he still scored quite regularly, but his goals no longer translated into victories for the team. Only eighth place in the league, quick elimination from the Italian Cup, only two victories in the Champions League, both against Celtic, resulting in elimination from the Champions League already in the 1-8. The scapegoat was the one who came to the rescue of his favorite team a year earlier. Three rounds and 30 goals in Milan, after which it seemed that the 23-year-old could still meet the expectations placed on him when he received the award for the most promising young football star two years earlier. After that season with no history, seeing no prospects for Milan, and encouraged by his good goal-scoring form, he once again tried to conquer the Premier League, this time wearing a Liverpool shirt. The Reds had just lost Luis Suarez to Barcelona and were looking for a player who could guarantee a similar number of goals at Anfield. If these were Brendan Rodgers' expectations, he was terribly mistaken, because the several months that the Italian striker spent in the city of the Beatles were the worst in his career until then. After returning to the Premier League, he appeared on the pitch only 16 times and managed to score only once. After the season, he was sent on loan to his second, or rather first, home, Milan. Perhaps too much pressure was put on him again to replace Luis Suarez, who was an absolute goal scorer at Anfield. When paying 20 million euros for the striker, you could count on more than one league goal. Instead, there was frustration further arguments with colleagues in the locker room, and one of the biggest transfer failures in Liverpool's history. So Balotelli was loaned to Milan, where not so long ago he had two successful seasons, but this time he did not regain his form. Just like the season before at Anfield, he finished the league scoring with just one goal for the second year in a row. When he returned from the loan, the Reds' dressing room was already managed by the new manager, Jurgen Klopp but the German did not even look at Mario when announcing the list of players called up for the training camp before the new season. At the age of only 25, the Italian was preparing for his sixth change of club, and the most important players were less and less willing to hire him. However, the French side Nice was tempted by Balotelli's services. The club, which 10 years earlier was at risk of relegation to the third league due to financial problems in 2016, as an absolute average player in League One, 
fell into the hands of a Chinese-American group of owners. A newly taken over club, new owners, an injection of money, and building a new force from scratch sounds like a copy of the history of Manchester City, but on an incomparably smaller scale. This smaller scale may have turned out to be a saving grace for Mario, as it also meant a lot less pressure away from the headlines, while still ensuring he was involved in an exciting venture. Mario's history has repeatedly shown that this element of excitement and novelty was the only impulse that was able to unleash the deep layers of talent within him over the years. Six goals in the first five matches, including two goals in prestigious matches against Marseille and Monaco. Fifteen league goals in his first season on the Côte d'Azur was his best result in his career so far, and the club took a place on the podium for the first time in forever and entered the Champions League qualifying rounds. Similarly to Manchester and Milan, his second season was individually even better. This time 18 goals in the league and as many as 7 goals in European Cups, but as in previous clubs, the second season was better than the first. Both in Inter-Manchester and in Milan, the third one turned out to be a disaster. It was no different in Nice, where in the meantime, there was a change of coach. Patrick Vieira, once an Arsenal legend, wanted to lead the team according to his own rules, not those set by a recalcitrant footballer who, this time, apart from disregarding the rules in the locker room, clearly does not care about the recommendations of the club's dietitian. Run down and completely out of shape, he left Nice in the middle of the season for the long-awaited Marseille, where he wanted to leave in the summer. Here Mario regained his shooting form again, even though he never found the goal in the autumn round. Despite a promising start and a good spring, Andre Villas-Boas, who replaced Rudy Garcia after the season, had no intention of extending the contract with the player who was still a ticking time bomb in the locker room and on the pitch. In the summer of 2019, Balotelli once again decided to press the reset button, and following the example of the move he made three years earlier, he chose a completely non-obvious direction, which was not to return to his home country, from which he had already left three times, but to his hometown and sign a contract with the Serie A newcomer. Brescia. However, their stay in their hometown turned into another nightmare. A stay marked by the word fight. The fight on the pitch to stay in Serie A and off it, the continued fight against racism. Both of these factors meant that at some point, Mario simply lost interest in continuing to play for Brescia. He stopped showing up for training, leaving the club in the relegation zone and condemning it to relegation to Serie B. Ironically, he himself found himself in the backroom of the Italian top league, signing a six-month contract. In Monza near Milan, with the club taken over by Silvio Berlusconi, where he became a clubmate of Kevin Prince Boateng. Just when it seemed that the career of the footballer nicknamed Super Mario in 2012 was coming to an end, at the age of 31 and at the bottom of his sporting career, Balotelli once again shows how unimaginably perverse and unpredictable his career is. As a player of the newcomer of the Turkish top league, Adana Demirspor, which was promoted to the top league for the first time in 26 years, and to which he was recruited by the Italian coach Vincenzo Montella, his 18 goals in the league equaled his best goal-scoring achievements. Once again, Roberto Mancini's name appears in this Mario story. Well, the form of his former protege was so impressive that the then Italian coach once again extended his hand to the player for whom he had lost not only his head, but also a lot of nerves many times in the past. After all, it was Mancini who called him up in 2018 for the first time since the failed World Cup in Brazil four years earlier, where the Italians didn't even make it out of the group. Mancini's adoptive son, as he talks about Balotelli, appeared again at the beginning of 2022 at the training consultation of the Italian national team before the playoff matches for participation in the World Cup in Qatar. Ultimately, he was not even included in the full squad for the match against Macedonia. After a successful season in the Turkish club, Balotelli, as he used to do, squandered everything. The Italian quarreled with the club's authorities and eventually landed in Switzerland. FC Sion was tempted to hire the former star. Unfortunately, Super Mario's Swiss adventure turned out to be a total failure, and after only a year, he terminated his contract with the club. 
Adana Demirspor once again extended a helping hand to Balotelli, in which the Italian played in eight matches this season and scored four goals. The history of football will certainly remember him as one of the greatest disappointments and a man who squandered his great talent with an inappropriate approach. Let us know what you think about Mario Balotelli's career. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future videos.